What's going on everyone, Jack here from Half Chrome, and this is the DJI Air 3. I've been flying it for a while, and I found a handful of accessories that I really like using with this, and I wanna share them with you. I want to tell you about the top 10 things that are make this thing just a little bit better. Now, so you know, all of the things I'm gonna talk about have links down below, and they are affiliate links. They help support the channel, they don't cost you a thing, and it's an easy way for you to find them. So let's talk about the 10 things that I think will make this an even better machine. The first are these. These are ND filters from Freewell, and this is the All Day Pack. Now I have ND polarized filters, ND4, 8, 16, 32, and 64. I also have a circular polarized filter without an ND, and then I have an ND1000 and an ND2000. Um, and ND filters are super important in helping you get the correct exposure for your shutter speed. And that's particularly important on a drone that doesn't have an adjustable aperture. That's actually kind of one of the things that I wish this thing had that it doesn't but we can get around it just a little bit with an ND filter. I have done some videos on how they work and when to choose them, but I'll give you the quick rundown and you can take a look at this chart. So we're gonna use an ND4 at dawn or dusk, ND8 on a cloudy day, uh, an ND16 and 32, those are really the two that I use the most, um, and they're gonna be on partly cloudy to sunny days. An ND64 is reserved for a very bright day, and those 1000 and 2000s, those are really only going to be used uh, if I'm trying to do some long exposure photography. To choose the right ND filter, basically I'm gonna take my frame rate, now I usually shoot at 30 frames a second, and then I'm basically gonna double that for the shutter speed, so I'm gonna shoot at 1 60th, and that's gonna give me kind of the right motion blur. Motion blur is generally what people are looking for with ND filters. If you don't have an ND filter and everything is in focus, it just doesn't look natural, so the eyes things tend to be a little choppy. I actually kind of prefer uh, taking that shutter speed down, um, you know, if I'm shooting at 30 frames a second, I actually like the way it looks when I'm shooting at 1 30th of a second. I get a little bit more blur, and I think that just kind of looks a little bit more cinematic. Uh, people like to throw that term around, so I think I will too. It's more really of a personal preference, not a hard and fast rule. Now the next item that I think you're going to want to pick up is this. This is a 100 watt charger. Now for some reason DJI did not include a charger with this drone. I spent over $1,500 on the Flymore combo with the RC2 and there was no way to charge my drone in there. That's kind of ridiculous. And it's going to cost another $95 to get a 100 watt charger from DJI. That's kind of stupid. So I went on Amazon and I bought this one from Anchor. Now they're a respected company. They make really good products and this 100 watt charger is going to cost you about 32 bucks. Yes. Um, and you do want at least a 65 watt charger if not a 100 watt charger because otherwise it's going to take forever to charge your battery. So uh, pony up for one of these. It's nice and small. It'll fit in your case. You're going to be happy you did. So the next thing on my list is this. This is a hard case and I like this one from Lycus. Yes, my Flymore combo did come with a shoulder bag, but I'm not a big fan of the shoulder bags. I really do like hard cases because they do a better job of protecting your drone. Now this one from Lycus has plenty of room to hold all of my stuff. There's compartments underneath everything so I can get my filters down here. Uh, I got my extra props underneath my batteries. Uh, lots of space inside this case, plus, plus it's waterproof, dustproof, and it's gonna float if I, you know, was to drop it in the water. So definitely some advantages to picking up a hard case. Now it does take up a little bit more space, but I'm definitely a fan of the hard cases. I keep all of my drones in there because at the end of the day, it does a better job of protecting this expensive investment. My next suggestion is something that's really small but super important, and you wanna get the right SD card. Um, I've had a lot of success with these SanDisk Extremes, the gold and red ones, um, and you're definitely gonna want something with a little bit more capacity. Um, I'd start at 64, 128, 256, 512, you know, a full terabyte 
kind of depends on how much memory you need or want and your budget for these things. I find half of a terabyte is definitely more than good enough. Um, I can hold tons of storage on there and generally I'm saving it to my computer, but everyone has their own different process. Now this is another small but important accessory that you're gonna want for your drone. This is a strobe light. So if you're flying at night, this is required, right? You need something that can be seen for three statute miles. I've got this one, this is the Firehouse Arc 5. It's nice and small and compact. I usually put a piece of double-sided sticky tape right here and stick it to the top of the drone, uh, right kind of in between the eyes, right? The two sensors. And that does the job. There's a handful of different options out there, but make sure you get something small and compact so it's not gonna add a whole lot of weight or wind resistance. Now the drone is great because these batteries seemingly last forever. Um, you know, they say 47 minutes. My testing will tell you it's a little bit closer to 30. If you haven't seen that test, you may wanna check it out. But uh, an extra battery or two or three is definitely something you should consider, uh, especially if you fly commercially. Yes, 30 minutes is a long time, but you never know what you're going to encounter. Unfortunately, these batteries are expensive. So if you didn't get the fly more combo, you still can add them one at a time, but they're about $160. Um, and this charger is also pretty nice, um, but it's also a little bit pricey. All the DJI stuff, yes, it's expensive, but you know what's more frustrating? Running out of battery. Actually, this next one is nice and inexpensive and it is a landing pad. Now, um, I like a landing pad, not because I need to know where I took off and landed, but it's great to take two locations where the ground maybe is uneven, there's sand or dirt or snow. If I put this down, I know that my drone is gonna land on a nice flat and dry surface. That's really important. It's gonna help keep dust and dirt out of the motors. Definitely something I'd recommend. I like ones that fold up can fit right in my case. Now, if you bought the package with the RCN2, there's no built-in screen, and I really like to fly with an iPad, if at all possible. Actually, I like an iPad mini, and I found this print on Thingiverse that allows that to extend so I can fit an iPad. Yeah, and it's free. Sure, you could buy one of those attachments. They're not super expensive. I've seen them for like 20 bucks if you don't have access to a 3D printer. But if you do, this is the way to go. And I think at some point DJI is actually gonna release the RC2 uh, as an independent purchase. The RC1 uh, I believe was like 300 or so dollars. This is awesome. So if they do release this by itself, definitely something I would recommend picking up. Okay, so this last item is not something you can buy, but it's something you have to earn, and it's your Part 107 license. Uh, if you wanna fly a drone and make some money, whether it's shooting real estate, weddings, mapping, uh, even a YouTube channel, yes, you have to have one of these cards, and the only way to get it is to pass the Part 107 exam. Now we have actually a handful of videos that are going to help you do it. I've got a walkthrough of the practice test um, that anybody can access, and also tips and tricks those are free videos for everybody. But for our Patreons, I have a whole series of videos that are gonna walk you through sectional charts and airport operations, all that fun stuff. So if you're thinking about going pro, you definitely need one of these. And if you are a pro, you're gonna want a backup drone. The last thing I'm gonna suggest is actually the Mini 3 Pro. If you're going on a commercial shoot, you're gonna to wanna to have a backup, and it's nice to have something that is small and compact. And this thing actually has a really good camera. It's a very similar one over 1 1.3 inch sensor. Yes, this small little drone is pretty darn impressive, and it makes the perfect backup drone to your Air 3. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. If, if it was, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment down below. And don't forget, if you're interested in any of these items, links down below where you can buy them or get more information. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. Good luck, everyone. Happy flying.